You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Balls. What's going on diecast collectors and diecast reviews on YouTube? This is Original Big Bri here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a, uh, another diecast review but it's not going to be any other ordinary diecast review. Um, it's going to be something that uh, I, it's going to be the return of a uh, mega diecast review that I ended up uh, starting its debut last year around last fall and I got a lot of positive feedback for that. But I bet you guys wonder what the mega diecast review is if you guys said, if this, if you guys didn't tune into the last video. Uh, I will uh, post a link in the description if you guys want to check that out because that got a lot of great feedback from all my uh, subscribers and best friends as well. But uh, since it just recently was the month of May leading up to the Indy 500 and uh, that's the reason why I was in my two week absence on YouTube because I was at the, uh, the qualifying weeks and also on race weekend for the 101st running of the Indianapolis 500. So without further ado guys, we're going to do a mega diecast review on... The 2017 um, green light collectible die cast um, for for the Verizon IndyCar series, and you can see right here these are all 18 cars that are released um, that were all released at uh, at uh, during the month of May. Um, like I said, during around uh, Carb Day, that uh, this is when most of them were released. So uh, really interesting right here, and of course during this Mega Diecast reel we'll be going through all the different teams, categorize them by their teams, um, you know from popular to you know least popular, and I'll be also giving my one-on-one -on -one thoughts with some comparisons and you know just some more interesting stuff you guys will be looking forward to this review. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and commence this uh, Mega Diecast review, shall we? And of course, the first team we got to start off for this Megas Diecast review is none other than the Penske Powerhouse Team, um, Team Penske. Um, this is definitely, of course, we have five cars that are released for this year. Uh, and three of them do look very similar to last year's, but there are two that stand out as well. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and let's take a look at these, uh, closer look at these cars, shall we? And of course, the first one up, it is your 2016 Verizon IndyCar Series champion, Simon Pagano in the bright yellow Menard Chevrolet. This is a die cast uh, that many Simon Pagano fans have really been looking forward to getting, including myself. I even have the winning team model as well, which was autographed, of course, at... Uh, um, at IMS because I was there. Um, I know a lot of my friends can back up me on that, but uh, they, they do got and even my friends can agree with on one thing. This diecast is beautiful. You can see right there, it's rocking the nice dingolo yellow, uh, typical for the Menards cars. And uh, the last time we had a Menards car produced uh, from Greenlight Collectibles was, I believe, with Ed Carpenter in uh, Vision Racing in 2009, and that was made by uh, Hot Wheels and not Greenlight. So I just corrected myself right there. Um, this yeah, still a little rusty. I'm trying to do the diecast reviews for indie cars, but you know, working my way up there slowly but surely. But I'm giving you guys a nice 360 view of this Menard Chevrolet. Looks absolutely be beautiful, and Greenlight did a great job nailing the color of this because it is. Um, does look a little wonky on camera, but um, if you guys get this car in real life, the yellow really is nice and bright, and uh, it's very accurate to what the to the actual car. So that's something I really gotta get green light for. Um, I don't really have uh, any much else to say about this car, but it is a really cool looking car, and this is also the, the car that he. Um, well, livery wise, he, this is the paint the livery that he won at Phoenix. So, of course, if you guys you know want to make any uh, custom race wins, this could be a cool car to get right here. But I would probably recommend, highly recommend getting this car because it is nice and bright, and um, it's the first time we got a number one um, Penske car since uh, Will Powers uh, number one Verizon car in 2015. So, really cool right there, and definitely something I would highly recommend getting. And yeah, like I said, not too much else to say about it. Um, we're gonna we got 17 more other cars to review, but uh, this is definitely a sign Pagano car I would highly recommend getting, and I think it is gonna be one of the favorites for this year for uh, the 2017 um, IndyCar diecast for sure. And of course, the next one up it is the new guy in Team Penske 
formerly the driver of Ed Carpenter Racing, has switched over to the number two Verizon Chevrolet for this year in place of Juan Pablo Montoya's uh, Verizon car, or Joseph Newgarden. And before you guys notice on the comments that yes, this is actually the 2016 car. I did not bought the 2017 car from this year because, um, you know, livery-wise, it's the same livery. Uh, the only differences, I will point out the differences on this car if you guys are highly encouraged to get the uh, 2016 car or the 2017 car. But um, we're just going to pretend this is a uh, new garden car, even though it is clearly the 2016 car. Um, so the only differences on this car from uh, last year's model is, of course, the Team Penske 50 anniversary logo. That is gone on the sponsor blockers, so that is completely just that nice chrome silver. Um, and of course, Juan Pablo uh, Toy's name is no longer there anymore. It's just the New Gardens. And I believe there's also PTC right on the bottom, or PBG. I think it's PTC though. That is on the uh, in between where the front suspension is, where that gap is right there, um, where the front suspension is not sticking out. So that's uh, that's probably the only difference I've noticed. But still a really cool livery. Um, you know, I I do still appreciate the uh, new rebranding from Verizon. Of course, they rebranded not only their cars but also the uh, Verizon logo as well which really has grown on to me but uh, if you failed to uh, get Montoya's car last year then this is a great opportunity to get this even though my car looks a little slanted but uh, yeah the Verizon liveries always look really cool and this one I should highly recommend picking up especially if you're a Joseph Newgarden fan um, and of course I'm hoping that they make his hum car because that car won at the Barber race so he already is a 2017 winner so great job for Justin Newgarden and We'll see how he does with the rest of the Penske cars. But, uh, yeah, really cool seeing the American driver in Team Penske. And uh, just watch out for this kid because Justin Newgarden is definitely one of the coolest generation, uh, new generation drivers that we have in the Verizon IndyCar Series. So something to watch out there for sure, indeed. And boy, oh boy, does this car look familiar. The LEO colors have returned in the Hitachi car. Um, so this car is very similar to last year's car, but uh, of course there are some little differences. Um, and this is the 2016 car, by the way, as well, because um, you know the car, like I said, is the same as last year's. So that's why I didn't pick up the 2017 model, but uh, feel free. Um, if you guys are encouraged in this video, um, <laughs> you can find out if you want the 2016 model or the 2017. But uh, of course, I'll be giving you guys 360 view. Um, so, like I said, this ain't the, the 2017 car, but uh, it is very, very similar to what it actually is, like livery wise. Like, they're probably like, like is little sponsor changes, but that's mostly about it. Of course, you know, the 50 Team Penske 50th anniversary, that will be gone. And uh, let's see, I think also a PBG is no longer on the Airflex, so it's just AAA on the 2017 model. And uh, I believe also similar to the uh, Just New Garden car, the PTC will be right on that little gap right there where the uh, front suspension is. So, but that's only the main difference right there, but still a really nice looking car. I do like the uh, basic livery style that it has. That's something that the captain always does for Team Penske. Um, same thing with its, you know, its uh, Sprint Cup cars as well. He always keeps those paint schemes very uniform. And uh, speaking of uniform, guys, we do have another Elio car to show off, and it is his AAA insurance car. This is the first car that we've got on the new Elio kit for the AAA, um, for the AAA colors, and it's really cool. The last time we had the AAA car being produced was back in, uh, I believe, 2015, when we had the old DW12 mold. Unfortunately, I don't have that car uh, with me, and I did not bought it. Um, because that uh, delivery has been the same as well, but um, th this livery is basically the same as the Hitachi one, just wherever the black was on the Hitachi car, that's where the blue is. So, like I said, paint, um, Team Penske really likes to keep their paint schemes very uniform and you know, very, um, you know, very dynamic and very, you know, singular. I, I was trying to think about other synonyms, but uh, <laughs> just to sound professional, because, you know, my reviews are, you know, quite, uh, you know, a little bit professional and a little bit goofy as well, but uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy this. But, um, you know, I wish I have a lot, I wish I would have a lot of time to go over all these sponsors, but you can clearly see what these sponsors are, and plus, this will be like a good hour review by how I keep this up um, with these diecasts, with this mega diecast review. But, uh, yeah, really cool, and like I said, uh, the paint scheme is very similar to the Hitachi car just you know like I said one's black and one's blue but everywhere else it's pretty much the same except for the wings though the back wings are black and the 
and it's white on the AAA car. But, um, you know, if I had to recommend which uh, Elio car you would get, I would probably recommend getting the AAA car because we did not get that car last year. But, uh, they have, yeah, I'll just do another 360 view just to show you guys the differences. Um, but, yeah, once again, this is a 2017 car and this is a 2016, but um, they do have the 2017 car for this, but it's very similar. But overall, Elio does have some great die casts that I would recommend getting, and uh, if you didn't get these cars yet, would highly rec recommend getting them, especially that AAA car, because, um, you know, it is definitely going to give you a lot of variation for not only for your die cast views, but also for your collection as well. And last but not least, we got the good old Aussie, your 2014 Verizon IndyCar Series champion, Will Power, guys. Uh, rocking the good old Verizon colors, as always, like he's always done throughout the past few years that he's been driving for the captain, Team Penske. Uh, next to him and Elio, they are the two veterans in the... Uh, in the Team Penske lineup for this year. And also one Pablo Montoya, but um, they haven't made his die cast yet though. But really cool right there. Paints, uh, the livery is basically the same as last year's. And like I pointed out, this is the 2016 model. Uh, I just wanted to save a few more bucks, so that's why I didn't pick up the 2017 model. But similar to the LEO car and the, uh, the two Verizon car, um, the new garden slash Montoya car. So similar as those other two cars I just showed you, um, the Team Penske logo, uh, 50th anniversary, that is gone on the 2017 car. And also PTC is on the, uh, it's where that is right there. I don't really want to go too scripted because I already showed you guys that. Um, but still a really nice livery. Of course, any Will Power fans will definitely recommend getting this because this is the only die cast that they make for him this year. But, um, of course, it's rocking the red numbers instead of the new Garden car, which is black. So, um, that's the only difference for the Verizon cars. But, um, and also a red, uh, red uh, top camera as well. So, um, but, but still a really nice looking car regardless. So, especially if you're a Will Power fan. Um, and, of course, this is your guy who won at the Grand Prix of Indy. As not too many people were happy about that, but uh, at least they didn't want the Indianapolis 500, though. But uh, Will Power is a you know a you know a pretty decent guy. I would say he's my you know not my favorite in Team Penske, but um, you know there are worse guys. Montoya, <laughs> hate to call that out, but you know it is what it is. But uh, yeah, the Will Power car is very very similar to last year's with a little few differences, but still a really nice cool car to get, especially on the Chevrolet Aero kit. And um, like I said, if you're a Will Power fan, I would highly recommend getting it especially if you're cheering for a good old willpower and the next category in this list guys we got to go off to uh to switch sides team penske's rival in the verizon indycar series good old ship ganassi racing guys and if you guys are wondering oh, there's not a scott dixon car oh what what's happened right there well if you guys haven't been following the verizon indycar series uh, scott dixon uh during the beginning of the season did not have a sponsor because Target actually left at the end of last year which is very unfortunate due to uh, you know the CEO wanting to move on to other levels of advertising apparently that's what from I heard but um, you guys probably could crack down that as much as me but I just reviewed diecast so what do I know <laughs> but um, yeah hopefully we'll be getting a Scott Dixon car uh, soon but it won't be on this mega diecast review but we'll just see how that goes right there hoping they can make the entity data with the camper world car but anyway back on track we do got uh, these three bad boys right here we got Max Chilton's Gallagher Honda the number 10 entity data Honda of Tony Kanan veteran driver uh, your 2013 8500 champion and Charlie Kimball in the Traceba Honda so of course Ganassi's back in the Hondas and uh, while these paint while these liveries look very similar but um, we are going to go ahead and take a closer look at these shall we all right, and we're going to be starting things off with, of course, the guy who almost had a shot of winning this year's 500, um, Indy 500, Max Chilton. And, man, he had such a great run in the Indianapolis 500. It looked like he almost got it, and he was running very well, led a good about 50-something laps, and then, unfortunately, started dropping back as the race went on. But uh, Max Chilton really started to show some big improvements, especially with all that mentoring from Dario Franchini. But uh, entering its second year in the Verizon IndyCar Series, Max Chilton really has been showing uh, something, especially like what uh, happened at the Indy 500 this year. So, uh, so close, but uh, you know, this kid is young and he will definitely go places and that's something Chip Ganassi should be really proud of. But uh, if you guys notice the Gallagher car from this year, it is on a new aero kit. It's on the uh, Chip Ganassi, actually went back to their roots and decided to go back to Honda, which is awesome because uh, the last time Chip Ganassi won the uh, won championships, uh, 
they actually were in a Honda, well, besides 2015 when they were in Chevrolet with Scott Dixon. But uh, they've had a lot more success with Honda, and I think that was a smart move right there. But, um, yeah, but there is definitely going to be a big difference in this, as I'll be showing you guys our first comparison. And that was my hand right there. But uh, here is last year's car, and you can already tell a big difference, of course, with the Aero Kits. This is the Chevrolet Aero Kit and the Honda Aero Kit, so already a big difference. Even when you look closer at this, I'll give myself a little zoom so you guys can even look at this a lot more closer. Uh, the camera can focus pretty well. Um, you know, the focusing likes to go off sometimes. But uh, even in the paint scheme, uh, I keep saying paint scheme, livery, it looks very different. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into close detail of the livery, but you can clearly see there's a big difference. Uh, a lot more blue and uh, dark blue, like a navy blue on the uh, 2017 model. And then uh, last year's model just looking a little bit different. Um, it looks like the colors were inverted. But uh, I do like the Honda model, in my opinion, just a little bit better. Um, plus the decals look a little more nicer. And plus, you know, Greenlight did a great job with the Honda Aero Kit. But feel free to tell me in the comments which ones you like better, guys. But I really do like this car. I didn't think the livery changed that much, but uh, after doing this comparison, now you'll actually see. So really glad I bought the uh, 2017 model. But uh, really nice right there. And... Um, I did got this. Uh, I did got the package autographed uh, by Max Chilton, both 2017 and 2016. However, though, I'm a little confused. Though, if you notice that uh, right by on the side pod, that's where the Gallagher logo is. It looks like it's for the camera view, but I don't know if this is a screw up. But uh, but feel free to tell me in the comments. I think uh, my good uh, uh, Greenlight friends uh, who know Greenlight Diecast a lot, uh, Race Day 2011, David Lane on YouTube, maybe they can tell me about this. But uh, I don't think that's right. I think it should be a little more farther down, probably in between where the uh, engine cover is and the air flake is. Um, cause, but I don't know. I think that's just my OCD kicking in. But I don't know. That's just a little weird in my opinion. But other than that, I think it's still a really nice looking car regardless. And uh, like I said, feel free to tell me in the comments which car you like better. But like I said, I think the Ganassi cars look a lot more better with the Honda Aero Kit. And next up, we got the fan favorite for Indianapolis uh, Motor Speedway, Tony Kanaan. As I mentioned, he is your 2013 Indy 500 champion and your 2004 uh, Verizon IndyCar Series champion. So, um, you know, and this is also Tony Kanaan's 20th year uh, in the Verizon IndyCar Series. So, uh, we got ourselves quite a veteran to review. Uh, he's actually has a, he, him and Ellie are actually tied for uh, most seasons so far. So, very interesting. But the NTD data colors are back again for this year. And of course, they are on the Honda Air Kit, which looks really cool. But the livery is very similar to last year's cars. And I'll be doing a 360 view of this very shortly. Get a good view of all those sponsors. Uh, unfortunately, the 7-Eleven logo is not on this car. This was before the announcement, so um, it is a little bit inaccurate. But you know, get you, you, you know, it is what it is. Though I mean, uh, green light can't get you know everything right. Though, however, though there are no numbers on the uh, on the rear uh, tire guards, guys. If you guys have noticed on like on other cars, like um, like, like this uh, Graham Rahal car, for example, there are numbers on this car and sponsors but here the Ganassi cars are all plain uh, it's even like that on the Chilton car as well so don't know if that's something that Greenlight decided to screw up on or just maybe that was just from Ganassi's request but uh, who knows but a uh, really nice looking car and of course since I have last year's car I'll be doing a little comparison so you guys can see uh, which model is better but I do love the Honda model a little bit more because uh, even down right you know, to the rabbit ears I think Greenlight did a great job with that but as you see right there, big difference in the manufacturers, even the decals as well. The decals look a little more stretched out and a little more, uh, you know, probably a little more uh, better in my opinion. And uh, yeah, you can see right there, it looks really cool. And uh, of course, the typical side-by-side -side comparison. So, if, you know, like I said, feel free to tell me in the comments what you guys think is the better model of the two. Personally, in my opinion, I think both of them look really cool. I, I do like the how you know this is more detailed on the 2016 model, <coughs> but uh, really nice right here. The entity data colors really have grown on to me. Um, especially, I mean, last year's I was like, yeah, the paint seems all right, but it really has grown on to me now. Um, but yeah, really nice looking car, and I'll be just switching those right, right there. But uh, if you're a Tony Kanaan fan, I would highly recommend getting this car. 
nothing much else to say about it, but um, yeah, it's still a really cool looking car, and uh, we'll see if Tony Kanaka can bring in another W before he, uh, you know, for, for, uh, before he, uh, you know, uh, hangs up the helmet for good. But uh, God knows how long that will be. But uh, TK is such a great guy to see, and we'll watch out for him during the rest of this uh, Verizon IndyCar Series season. And last but not least, we gotta go off to the direction of Charlie Kimball. That probably wasn't the best introduction I had, but I wanted to be a little creative, even though it was kind of a fail. But anyways, Charlie Kimball and his Traceba, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. God almighty, I'm not the best with pronunciations, but uh, the Traceba Honda makes a return. Well, and uh, actually, the Traceba, the Traceba sponsor makes a return, but the Honda Aero Kit actually um, does make a return for this year, because last year they ran the Chevy Aero Kits, as all the Ganassi cars did, but uh, you see right there, uh, the livery looks very similar to last year's, but of course with the arrow kit, the, the uh, livery will change somewhat, but uh, take a look, it does look really cool though. However though, the green on the rear wing just look, a it does look a little more uh, on the brighter side in my opinion, and kind of, I don't know, it, you can easily see on the camera just how odd it looks. Uh, it's supposed to be like a olive green, but uh, it's more like a, I don't know if that's just the camera, but it does look a little lighter. So that is the thing that is kind of bugging me a little bit. Wish green light would probably would have, you know, touched up on that color. But, you know, it's always the little things that get to me. But I don't know, it just looks a little tacky because the colors don't really match right. But still looks nice regardless, so I think it looks a lot more better than the Chevrolet Arrow Kit. Um, just, you know, a few little errors to it. Uh, except for that little error, but it still looks really cool though. And of course, the comparison here is last year's model, which uh, the green does look a little more. Uh, the, the green does look a little more different. I think it's just for decal wise, but I'm gonna lift the camera up so you guys can really see a good comparison, especially in the paint scheme. I think the decals look a lot more uh, better on the 2017 model, in my opinion, uh, especially when it comes to the uh, side, because uh, last year I had a little, uh, you know, a little. Uh, now, I didn't really have the best uh, quality control on my car last year for the 2017 car. Um, but for this year, the decals, you know, were lo look a little more better. The 83 is still kind of messed up right there. But besides that, uh, rear wing, it, it looks good regardless. So, But uh, like I said, feel free to mention in the comments which car you like better, the Chevrolet or the Honda. And, um, you know, well, we'll just see what happens right there. I just, I, I'm always curious to see what people have to think about uh yeah, the differences, and that's why I like doing these comparisons. But uh, really nice looking, and you can see the paint scheme definitely. Um, livery. Well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna call it livery or paint scheme um, in this review. So why not? Because I got so much more cars to re review in this uh, Mega Diecast review. But uh, yeah, Charlie Kimball. You know, we'll see if he'll ever crack another win. Uh, it looked like he had a good shot at the Indy 500, uh, of course, with this Honda e engine blowing up. That was very unfortunate for him. But uh, Kimball's a really cool guy, and we'll just see what happens for him as the year goes on. And next up is the good old guys at Adretti Autosport. These guys have been wicked fast, especially when it comes to tracks like uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You can always count on these guys to go out and get, uh, you know, that 500 win. Well, besides Marco Andretti, <laughs> I mean, there was that one time Tales of Six, but you know, we are going to move on from that before all the Andretti fans get triggered. Uh, I apologize for that. Just had to put out that little uh, uh, emphasis on that. But uh, yeah, this is going to be really cool. We do got all the Andretti cars for this year. Uh, we are also going to be getting a Fernando Alonso car. Um, his uh, McLaren in 164 and also Takuma Sato your 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series Indy 500 champion um, We're gonna be getting that car as well So it's gonna be looking good for Andretti Allsport But for now this is the three we got right here and we'll be taking a closer look at these bad boys shall we? And probably one of the biggest surprises in the die cast that we have had in Greenlight's history um, especially for 2017, none of us were expecting to gain this car produced. As you guys that might have known, or if you guys have followed uh, the, the whole history of United Fiber and Data, they first started with James Hinchcliffe in 2014, and uh, they weren't around in 2015 because they didn't pay up 
Um, they weren't on time with their payments, so that's what got them to not be in running in the 2015 season. Um, thus, having Hinchcliffe going to Schmidt and uh, UFD being no longer a pro aisle sponsor for Andretti Osport. But then they came back uh, in, uh, in the 2016 Indy 500 sponsoring Carlos Munoz, and they've been with them ever since. And they just upgraded as their primary sponsor for Marco Andretti because we were going to have an H8 Grey car being produced. And uh, Greenlight didn't say anything about, you know, of uh, the HH grade card being replaced. This was a total surprise from us. And we, luckily, me, David Land, and Race Day 2011 were um, luckily to found out about this. Uh, thanks to one of our good friends, Kevin Rawlings. He was the first one that actually got this car. So, uh, good shout out to him. And make sure to check out his channel. I'll probably put in the link in the description if you guys want to check out my good friend, Kevin. And, of course, if you guys already know, Race Day 2011 and David Land on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, very very surprising to see the United Fiber and Data return, especially on the number 27 car, guys, because it's been since 2014 since that has happened. But uh, they upgraded as a proud as a as a new sponsor for Marco Andretti. So really cool right there because Snapple left at the end of last year, or they just got downgraded to a smaller sponsor now. But you can clearly see a lot of you know very uh, nice um, color variation in the uh, in the sponsors. Got a nice, good variety right there. That's something I do like about the Andretti Autosport cars. They do have a nice variety and color paint schemes. But you can clearly see right there, UFD is really shown all over this car. And um, there's even the Snapple logo that's right there on the rear wing. So, like I said, Snapple didn't go away. They just, you know, are just down. They just got downgraded as a little sponsor now, as a, unlike a main sponsor, which that was in 20. Uh, 14 to 2016 uh, so good three years for Marco Andretti he had that car and now he's with the United Fiber and Data car and uh, this car looks really cool I'm glad that Greenlight decided to go ahead and uh, give this car instead of the HH grade car because it is the more accurate car that he's been driving throughout the season and a little side-by-side -side comparison I'll be showing the James Hinchcliffe car from 2014 so this car because that's the last time uh, and the only time we've had a UFD car being produced and you can see lots of big differences right here and you can just see how far the 27 has gone especially during the days with James Hinchcliffe um, even the paint scheme has changed but they have still kept that um, those little feathers and wings that's a signature thing for United Fiber and Data uh, but feel free to tell me in the comments which ones you like a little better. I do like the darker blue on the 2014 car, but uh, the UFD uh, car for this year really uh, has something to be uh, to be proud of, and that's uh, I'm really glad that Greenlight was able to produce produce this car. Total surprise for all of us, including uh, you know the, the three of us, me, David, and Rob. Um, luckily, we were very fortunate. Very fortunate to found this out, and uh, I'm glad we got this card. Said the HH Great Car because um, he never ran the HH Great Car because they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy around uh, before St. Petersburg. So um, yeah, this is a car I would highly recommend getting. Um, and once again, great job for Greenlight for you know. Um, giving us this total surprise for Andretti Autosport. And the next one up is your 2014 Verizon IndyCar Series Indy 500 Champion and your 2012 um, IZOD IndyCar Series Champion, which that was back in the IZOD IndyCar Series. <laughs> the Ryan Hunter Ray guys, um, back with the DHL colors again for another year. I mean, of course, this is like an iconic sponsor now for, you know, Andretti Autosport, especially for Ryan Hunter Ray. I mean, DHL and Hunter Ray go together like, you know, uh, peanut butter and jelly. It's just one of those combos that never gets old, and especially since we now have this car on the right arrow kit, unlike last year's, which is on the DW12. So I'll just give you guys a little 360 view of this car. And yeah, the yellow does look a little lighter on camera, but it's a lot more darker in person. So do apologize if the yellow does look a little uh, lighter on camera but still really looks really nice and like I said we actually got the right arrow kits on this car so great job for green light they did a really good job you know replicating this car and um, yeah really nice it looks like Hunter Ray had a great shot of winning the 500 this year but unfortunately his engine blew up um, you know Honda's engine performance I had a feeling something was gonna go wrong uh, with that but Hunter Ray was so close yet again and for second year in a row he has something going bad going wrong for him at the Indy 500 so very unfortunate 
But um, I'm sure we'll see Hunter Rain in victory lane very soon because he's such a talented driver for Andretti Autosport. But here's a side-by-side -side comparison of last year's car to this year's. And I'm going to raise the camera up for this, but you can clearly see big difference in the car, uh, especially in the aero kits. Uh, the, the red looks a little more darker on the 2016 model. It's a little more lighter on this year's model, so I, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, depending on how which ones you like better, but still really cool right there. They still got the same livery and paint scheme. The little banner, paint the little banner, the red banner that goes up on the top of the car. Um, so that's really nice right there. And uh, go back here and we'll do the little side by side comparisons. Of course, like always, I love doing these comparisons. You can just see how much they have progressed and how much better looking it looks on the uh, right arrow kit. So uh, great job for green lights. But um, if you, you know, <laughs> I, I would highly recommend getting the 2017 model over the 2016 model because it was on the old DW12 mold, guys. So, um, and it's time to go for the arrow kits before um, <laughs> the new arrow kits come in next year. So, um, hopefully, Greenlight will be on the ball for that. But a really nice looking car. Of course, you got to get the classic yellow and red that goes on most of the DHL cars, except for his uh, 2013 and 2012 car, which was mostly had a little more white to it but uh, I do like this uh, livery really has grown on to me and um, we'll see how Hunter Ray does in this uh, next few months uh, hopefully he'll get a W very soon you can always count on Ryan Hunter Ray to get a win most likely Ohio will be his best bet or po uh, now Ohio uh, Iowa wow that's a big mess up right there <laughs> but uh, we'll see how the, the number 28 plays off as the year goes on and of course, the last guy up to bring up for a journey of sports, you're defending Indy, you're defending Indy 500 champion for 2016 at the hundredth running of the Indianapolis 500, Alexander Rossi. We got a diecast for him, and this is this is his 2017 diecast. And right off the bat, guys, there is a big error on this car. You can see where the Napa logo is. Yeah, that is a incorrect placement of where the Napa logo should be. Now, on the original car. Um, I guess I, well, green light to, to try to center it out so it does look a little better but it looks really messed up because it's supposed to be a little more to the right it's supposed to be more on the air flick and not on because right now it's like touching where the side pod is and it's getting close to the engine cover as well which is very inaccurate and it does look wonky as well like even I mean at an angle it doesn't look too bad but when you have it like at this like the, the spotter guys view uh, that's why I like to call this view the spotter guys view um, it looks very awkward you can see the Napa logo just doesn't look right when it's at this angle but um yeah but you know what more can you do green light tried their best i mean i i don't can't i don't see I, they could have made the napa logo a little more smaller but there's nothing too much i had to say about that and the yellow on the front wing right here does look a tad bit darker uh than this yellow that's on top of the engine cover so there are some screw-ups on this rossi car I will give them that, but I'm still glad we got a Rossi car for this year, guys, because um, last year, if you didn't want the 500, uh, I don't think we would ever see a Rossi car being produced ever, so glad Greenlight decided to keep the ball rolling and get this car produced, uh, even though it is... It does have some little changes to it uh, than the 2016 car, which I'll be showing you guys very soon. But do a little 360 view of this car. See, it's got red uh, rabbit ears on the back, which is really cool. And see all the sponsors. And, of course, Rossi's not a rookie anymore, so you got the white number 98. And, uh, yeah, looking pretty nice. And also, I, I forgot to point this out on the Hunter Ray car, but the 98 should be farther up a little more. And those sponsors that are above the 98 should actually be farther down. So that's another screw-up. For um, that, it's it's all it's like that all Andretti cars. Even with the Hunter Ray car, um, they the 28 should be a little farther up on the um, rear tire guard. So, uh, but you know, what more can you do? At least we're on, we're on the right arrow kit. But uh, you know, nobody's perfect. I know I get I, I do praise Greenlight a lot, but uh, they do have their flaws as well. But uh, we'll do a little uh, side by side comparison as I'll bring it up the 2016 500 winner and. I think the decal wise, this uh, the 2016 winner looks a lot more better in my opinion. I think Greenlight just rushed this out a little too soon because um, uh, the decals do look a little wonky on this car. Um, I, I kind of wish, you know, it, I mean, they did good with the Napa Auto Parts logo right here. But just, I don't know, just in my opinion, I think the 2016 car just looks a little more better. And also, what makes the 2016 car a little more better is that 
Um, this is something I don't get by green light. Um, the rear tire guards here are metal. If you can tell by the gloss, it's metal. But here they are plastic. So that's another good reason why the uh, 100th running car is a lot more better and it's a lot more accurate as well. Um, so this is probably the first car I got to say that, this, that the 2016 car is a lot more better than the 2017 car. But if you're an Alexander Rossi fan, I would recommend getting both. Um, because you know he is a new driver in the Rise IndyCar series, and um, you know that's something to be proud of. I know my good friend Matt Diorkel is definitely going to be looking forward to getting this car because he is a Rossi fan, or what he thinks he is. <laughs> but a shout out to uh, Matt Diorkel, he's a cool guy. Uh, follow him on Instagram and check him out on YouTube. Um, he likes Napa, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, really nice looking car, regardless though, with its flaws. But I still think, you know, green light could do a little bit better on this car. The 2016 car does look a little bit better, in my opinion. But, um, you know, Rossi almost had a shot of getting a second 500 car, uh, a second 500 win, but uh, unfortunately, he didn't got it done uh, with the little fuel cell issue coming down pit road at this year's uh, 100, 100 first running, so very unfortunate, but still a really nice looking car regardless. Just wish Greenlight didn't uh, rush this car out um, during carb day. And next up, we are gonna have the team that probably has had the most changes out of anybody for this year, uh, driver-wise and manufacturer-wise. AJ Foyt Racing cars are in, and they are being driven by Carlos Munoz and Connor Daly. Connor Daly uh, piling the number four, Chevrolet and Carlos Munoz in the iconic 14 for, like I said, AJ Foyt Racing. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a close look at these cars and we'll um, see how that goes. So let's take it away. And we got good old Myung Sung Connor Daly as the iconic Derek Daly would say. Um, yes, Connor Daly, guys. We finally got a die cast produced uh, for Connor. Unfortunately, if only they could have made that Smithfield Indy car that he drove in um, 2015. But unfortunately, that car didn't even uh, ran the a race because it literally blew up on that uh, on, on the start of that race. Not not even the start, like to, to when they were about to get ready. So Connor Daly's had some unfortunate luck, but really cool to see him getting a die cast produced. I know Connor Daly, if he's watching this video, he'd be really proud to have a die cast review in, uh, in his um, name and word. So really nice right there. First time we're getting the four car since uh, J.R. Hildebrand when he drove for Panther Racing. So really nice seeing the four car back even though it's with A.J. Foyt Racing now. But um, really nice. Lots of cool detail. Of course this is the first uh, Chevrolet mold that we got uh, on the new arrow kit mold for the um, AJ Foyt cars, and the last time we had an AJ Foyt car being produced was the uh, 2015 cars, um, which was Tukumasato and Jack Hogsworth. So, really nice looking right there. And of course, I'm also going to bring up the Carlos Munoz car. It's very similar to the Connor Daly paint scheme. Um, as you guys know, Foyt really likes to keep his cars very, um, you know, very uniform and basically the same. Kind of like how the Verizon cars are with uh, New Garden and Will Power. The only difference on the Munoz car, though, and the 14 is messed up on this as well, is that they added additional blue wings on top, on the additional blue pa uh, blue stripes on top of the uh, wings, and unfortunately, and Connor Daly's has just white wings. So that's how you can differentiate which one is which. But um, and of course, if they had the little rabbit ears, of course, I think Munoz's would have the blue, and Connor Daly would have red or white. But um, very similar paint scheme. But uh, if you're a big fan of the AJ Foyt cars, I would recommend probably getting both. Um, it would be great to, you know, uh, get your field going on uh, for, you know, for your IndyCar stop motions. And these two are really cool to pick up. And uh, another cool thing about the Munoz car, this is the second Munoz car that we got produced. Uh, the last time we had a Munoz car being produced was the 2015 uh, Andretti TV Sensei uh, Honda when he drove for Andretti Autosports. And um, I, I'm sure Munoz is really proud that this car is actually on a right arrow kit. <laughs> uh, that's just a little uh, thing that... Uh, um, me and Racy2011 uh, talked about when uh, Carlos Munoz looked at our diecast. He was like, oh, it's on the wrong arrow kit, but now it is. So, uh, <laughs> joke's on him now. But, um, yeah, and we'll also do be doing a little side-by-side -side comparison. Here is the Jack Hogsworth car. So, I'll just do a little comparison right there. You can clearly see big paint scheme. Uh, uh, the paint scheme is very similar, or livery. But um, there are some differences uh, 
but like how the layout of the livery is very similar just some slight changes to it the blue is a little more lighter on the uh, 26 on the 2017 model that almost I, was a fail and um, just some little differences right there this is Jack Hogsworth's 2015 car by the way just like to do a little comparison but uh, I do like how they decided to color uh, 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 on the 2015 car it was just all one solid color but here they uh, colored a good portion of the top of the um, tire guards red and then the rest are white so that's really nice attention to detail from Greenlight Collectibles but um, yeah like I said I would highly recommend getting both of these cars because um, like I said they are you know something to be proud of and glad to see AJ Foyt Racing back in the die casts and um, hopefully we'll see how they go as the year goes on because so far they've had a pretty rough year so far but uh, hopefully Carlos Munoz or Connor Daly can bounce up and um, hopefully get a good podium finish or maybe even a win for the good man AJ Foyt. If you ever told me if Greenlight was ever going to make a Dale Coyne racing cars man this could have been the year, and they did, man, and I am so impressed with Greenlight Collectibles. Probably the most underrated team and least funded team in the Verizon IndyCar series. Even if they don't have the most funds in the uh, series, they're still fortunate enough to get some diecast produced. Unfortunately, we don't have Ed Jones cards with us, but we do have... Uh, Sebastian Bourdais and Pippa Man, so this is going to be a really interesting section, uh, especially with the Bourdais car. I'm really looking forward to how we talk about that uh, very soon, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at these diecasts, shall we? And before I start this diecast review on the wonderfully talented Sebastian Bourdais, I wish him a speedy recovery after his little incident that they had during the qualification session for the 101st running of the Indianapolis 500. If, I'm not going to go into further detail on that just for, for big respects for Sebastian Bourdais because he's a wonderfully talented driver in the, uh, in the, IndyCar, in the IndyCar circuit. So, um, but yeah, so I guess you could call this car, but this uh, uh, James Davison slash Sebastian Bourdais car, but this car was marketed as a Sebastian Bourdais car. And man, this was a total surprise seeing this car being produced. Um, I got to give a good shout out to my friend uh, Brody Banta or Diecast Reviews on Instagram and YouTube. If you guys remember him, uh, he's a pre another guy that's really who was really big into indie cars diecast. So, uh, but he uh, was the first to break the news about this car. So, we gotta give him credit for this. And I was really surprised seeing this car being produced. And that's something that Greenlight did a great job getting the licensing rights for Dale Coin Racing to get this car produced. Because the last time we had a Bourdais car being produced was uh, um, his 2011. Uh, Boy Scouts car, which that car is really hard to find. The 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 2011 Boy Scouts number 19 car, driven by Smash Morday and Alex Lloyd, and then there was also the uh, Champ car, McDonald's car that he drove in uh, 2007, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is what when Champ car was around. But yeah, really nice looking car. I mean, I know it's a very simple paint scheme, but I am so happy we got a Dale Coin car produced uh, besides Pippa Man. This was a great surprise and who knows maybe we'll get an Ed Jones cards being produced but of course this is your uh, winner from St. Pete and I think uh, Greenlight was encouraged to make this car because uh, Sebastian Bourdais made a pleasant surprise and got the win at the uh, start of the season for the Verizon IndyCar Series at St. Petersburg and this is such a cool car man and I feel like this car is going to be hard to find so if you guys want to get this board eight car get it fast because not only it's going to be rare someday it's just a cool car to have in your collection especially for Sebastian Bourdais, a very talented driver in the Verizon IndyCar series. He's up there with the all-time winners. Um, you know, it, give him a car and he'll he'll get a win for anything, you know. It, it doesn't matter what car he drives. He this guy can win. Such a wonderful talented um driver Sebastian Bourdais is even his days in champ cars just he, he really is you know one of the uh, coolest guys to watch out in the Verizon car series but uh, he should be back at Sonoma so that should be cool right there but uh, the uh, Sebastian Bourdais 18 Dale Coin Racing Honda man I love this car a lot it's simple but I'm just so glad and once again great job for Greenlight Collectibles I'm getting all fanboyish now but I can't thank Greenlight Collectibles enough for getting this car produced what a great success this car is going to be and uh, I'm sure Sebastian Morday really appreciates getting this car produced and once again wish him a great speedy recovery and we will see him at Sonoma when he makes a return in September 
Alrighty, and we got another surprise for the Dale Coin Racing Cars. Pippa Man, for the second year in a row, is getting another diecast produced, and it actually has a lot more sponsors and numbers on it. Even has a numbers for once, guys. As you guys remember the car from last year, it was a pretty generic car, and it was also on the Chevrolet Aero Kit, which is totally inaccurate because Dale Coin Racing has been driving the Hondas. But this year, uh, this was actually the for the second year in a row. This was the first car that was released. Uh, the first actual 2017 diecast that was released for the Indy cars. So, uh, Pippa Man really is on the ball for getting her diecast out um, instead of Penske and Andretti and all those big teams, Ganassi. Usually, Penske's are like the first ones to come out, but uh, Pippa Man really has been stepping it up with, uh, you know, releasing her merchandise. And she does appreciate when you buy her diecast and any kind of merchandise related because she is the one that, uh, she, she's the one that's helped guide this produced. I mean, um, but this car, this paint, this uh, livery is basically based off uh, not this year's car that she ran at the 101st running in the Indianapolis 500, but it was from last year's, uh, the paint, like the paint scheme wise. I know they can't put Susan G. Komen on this car, uh, you know, due to you know the, the licensing rights. But um, you know, having Pippa's organization and her name on this car does really look cool, and they add a lot more sponsors to it. And also, just like the uh, 2016 car. And also on the Alexander Rossi car from last year, uh, metal bumper guards, so uh, metal tire guards. So that's really cool right there. Uh, I guess Pippa Man re re requests that for her diecast because she wants, you know, true diecast metal shape and form. So that's awesome right there. You've got the pink Firestone tires. They basically are just like the red Firestone um, tires that you see that they run on road courses like at Long Beach. So, but of course, Pippa Man only drives at the Indianapolis 500, and this car, you know, no exception. Once again, due to another 360 view, this car looks amazing, far more better than last year's, and it actually looks like a pretty cool looking race car. It's still kind of a little bit on the fancy side, like sponsor wise, but a lot more better looking than last year's. Speaking of last year's, here is the comparison, guys. You can clearly see this car, um, this year's car, definitely looks like an actual race car. So, got to give props to Pippa Man and Dale Coin Racing for helping getting this car produced, especially for Grand like Collectibles as well. It looks so much better on the Honda Aero Kit because last year's she uh, special requested to put it on the new Aero Kit, which unfortunately the only uh, Aero Kit that they had last year for Grand Light Collectibles was the Chevrolet Aero Kit. So, that's the reason why it was on the Chevy Mold last year. And also at the old Verizon, it only had the generic IndyCar logo on it. So, um, yeah, this car is going to look really cool for any stop motions out there. Uh, another car I think that is going to be rare someday, and you should probably recommend getting it. Um, I re recommend getting the 2017 car over the 2016 car because um, um, even though both are really cool, but this car just is a little more on the generic side but this year's car really stands out and i do like the livery as well so a uh, great job for pippa man getting another die cast produced and uh as she might not be that competitive but it's really cool that she was the um the only woman driver that we got for this year um to drive in the indianapolis 500 so uh good to have some uh diversity in the sports especially in the big race like the indy 500 but uh, we'll see how good pippa man will get and uh, we'll see how well this sells. I'm sure it's going to be a hot seller uh, when it gets um, into when when it gets to the end of the year for sure. And next up, we got the switching over to Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. We got some Graham Ray Hall diecasts, and we actually got not one but two Graham Ray Hall cars. As I lift the camera up gently, we got his steak and shake colors returning for this year. And a new sponsor as well, United Rentals. Uh, well, they actually are a new sponsor for diecast form, but they were on last year. But we're going to take a look at these two diecasts and get a closer look at them as we move on with this mega diecast review. Now, Steak and Shake is one of my favorite uh, sponsors in the Verizon IndyCar series because I always go to that place a lot, especially during uh, Indy 500 month when I'm at the uh, Indianapolis track. I always got to go and have a good steak burger and a Graham Ray Hall milkshake, uh, as David Land would say that a lot. <laughs> uh, he's got me saying that a lot now, but uh, Graham Ray Hall Steak and Shake car. 
um, looks really nice this year uh, it, it does look a little lighter on camera so I do apologize for that once again I mean of course camera qualities uh, or you know the exposure of the camera can't be too accurate but uh, you know here's the typical 360 view you got the nice red and black and white steak and shake colors you know the traditional colors for the steak and shake Honda for Grand Marais Hall and it's on the right aero kit for this year so we got the uh, wonderful Honda aero kit unlike last year's which is the DW12 and it was just only just a plain red car with just a bunch of sponsors but Graham Ray Hall definitely I think is a very remarkable guy so you can see him getting a lot of sponsors and uh, this car uh, the steak and shake car really has changed up a lot this year this car is basically based off on his St. Petersburg car. There are some slight differences on this car, like the the, the uh, MyJack logo. Uh, that's supposed to, I think that's not supposed to be there. I think it's supposed to be United Rentals or Penn Grand Motor Oil. I, I think I think these two are supposed to be uh, switched. So uh, where my, uh, MyJack is supposed to be uh, where United Rentals is. So those two sponsors are supposed to be inverted and then that'll be your St. Petersburg car. Um, I believe so, that is the case. But Penn Grand Motor Oil, that is where um, that, so yeah, this car is basically off the St. Petersburg car that he drove. Um, of course, Graham Ray Hall probably has had the most liveries out of anyone for this year. I think every race he's changed up his livery. Uh, even the 500 guys, I think uh, he had a Steak and Shake car, and the Steak and Shake logo was, I think it was, it was really big, and it was like, it was like very enlarged. So it's a lot more different than what the diecast is, but still looks really nice regardless. So, and uh, of course, I got the 2016 car with me right here, and you can clearly see big differences in the car uh, paint scheme wise I'm glad they added a lot more to the paint scheme instead of just traditional red um, and the red looks a little lighter on last year's than this year's so and of course uh, there's no uh, home of the original steak burgers they decided to change it up with all these uh, Penn Grand Motor Oil and uh, My Jack and all these other cool sponsors that uh, Graham Ray Hall is representing and um, for Ray Hall Letterman like in racing, but a really nice look of car. I do like the little touch-ups to it. Uh, I think it's a better buy than the, uh, well, of course it's a better buy because it's an accurate car, unlike last year's, which was a wannabe uh, aero kit car. <laughs> but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, and Greenlight did a great job nailing this car. The Steak and Shake car is always something to look forward to, and uh, we will see how Graham Ray Hall does. I feel like he will, he, he's starting, slowly starting to get better, guys, slowly, so, uh, we will uh, see how he goes, and uh, we will keep an eye on this uh, steak and shake car. But uh, to continue on with Graham Ray Hall, we also got his United Rentals Honda. And uh, we also got one more car as well, but I don't have with me the uh, Turn for Troops car. So Greenlight has confirmed they will be making that car. That's the car that he ran at the uh, 500 and also at the uh, Grand Prix of Indy as well. So um, actually the Grand Prix of Indy, that's what I meant, not the 500. Duh! <laughs> Already failed in, at this review, but here's the United Rentals car. Um, this is uh, basically the paint scheme. The uh, delivery is based off of United Rentals. I, I think they sponsored a couple races last year, so um, this livery does look very familiar. But I believe this car was ran at a. I think it was ran at a Phoenix, or it was at the test, of, at the Phoenix test session, from what I know. Because I don't think I see this car anywhere else ran for this year. I know last year they did ran this car a lot. I just can't remember when. But feel free to tell me in the comments. But uh, this was a pleasant surprise getting this car produced. I feel like this is gonna be another rare one. Yeah, um, especially um, I'm really glad we got some variety for Grand Marais Hall diecast. Uh, I mean, the last blue Grand Marais Hall car we got was the National Guard car from 2014. So, um, yeah, really nice looking car. Um, it, I, I probably do like the Steak and Shake car a little bit better, but um, it's got the, the livery is basically kind of the same thing. You got that little stripe right there, but of course the colors are different. But uh, still really nice looking car in my opinion, guys. You got a lot of cool sponsors on this. Uh, of course, United Rentals, Steak and Shake, Penn Grand Motor Oil, you know, the Bobby Ray Hall Automotive Group, all those cool looking sponsors that we got. Uh, right there and many more uh, my jack as well that's a really big loyal sponsor for ray hall letterman lagging racing but uh, if i had to recommend which ray hall car you want to get i would recommend getting both guys i think the steak and shake and united rentals car are both worth getting 
um, especially if you do want some variation in, um, like I said, the more the more variety in paint schemes, the better your stop motions will be. <laughs> Even though I'm not a stop motion maker, I do like some variety though. So um, this is going to be something really looking forward to your collection. And of course, for any Graham Ray Hall fans out there, of course, this is going to be something to look forward to. But uh, it's looking like a great year so far for Graham Ray Hall diecast, and we'll see if we can get any more as the years go on. And the best for last, we got the only Schmidt car produced for uh, for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports. It is G the mayor of Hinchtown, James Hinchcliffe, your 2016 uh, pole setter for the uh, 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. God, that feels good to say that. But yeah, this is such a cool looking car and it actually, the gold looks a lot more better on this car than last year, which was more of a bronze finish. I know it's got not gold chrome, but it looks a lot more better than last year's for sure. But uh, here is the car right here. Um, of course, I did not do that little intro uh, thing uh, for the other groups because this is only one car. Um, this is the only Schmidt car that we got for this year, unfortunately. I would like to see uh, the lotion car being produced or the Jay Howard car. But um, we'll see what Greenlight does. They always like to put some surprises out. But we got the good old Aero Electronics returning for James Hinchcliffe for another year. Um, they've been a very loyal sponsor for James Hinchcliffe, even after his uh, run with Dancing with the Stars, which he round out finishing second, but still did a great job. So I'm sure he got a lot of cool fans. Uh, but however, though, the Aero is a little screwed up on this, similar to the Rossi Napa car. It's a little more ang it's a little more angled. It should be a little, you know, farther down like um like see here like the tr the Traceba car. That's how the arrow logo that arrow logo should be. It should be like, you know, very uh, straight down and not have too much of a curve to it. Um, cuz it's more like at an angular curve and that is a little disappointing in my opinion. I mean, uh, they did a great job last year with the, uh, actually they did a great job with a couple years, like in 2014, 2015, but this year, I don't know what decided to make them do that. I guess it was the new arrow kit that caused it. But um, besides that, still looks really nice, and I also gotta say the gold looks a lot more better. I guess Greenlight took my advice from the uh, new gutter car last year, and they used that. So, um, so I guess I, I had some persuasion in that. <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of people had complaints about that car as well. But um, here's the 360 view once again. The mayor of Hinchtown. Um, really nice seeing this car being produced. It's always cool getting Hinchcliffe cars. Of course, since I am a Hinchcliffe fan. But you got the nice Aero Electronics Honda. And of course, going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. You'll see how much gold this car is than last year's. Uh, the gold does look a tad bit better. I mean, it's still a little, you know, a little on the bronze side, but not as bad as last year's though. And I do like how they add the white number. It really stands out a lot more, in my opinion. And even the white outline on Lucas Oil looks really cool. But um, the paint scheme definitely has, um, it, it has shrunk down in simpler tasks, but it looks really nice though regardless, as you can see. Um, they don't have the uh, gold or the gold bronze um, sponsor blocker anymore. So kind of a little downgrade, but um, still looks really nice. So I love the Honda Aero Kit for this year. Really makes this car stand out. And I even have the uh, 118 model as well. And just awesome. And every time, I, and of course, Hinchcliffe is probably one of the coolest guys to get an autograph from. And uh, he always loves seeing these new die casts being produced. And of course, with the gold, he's just, you know. <laughs> He's, uh, he's quite the character when he sees those die casts, but um, yeah, I would highly recommend getting this car over the uh, so-called uh, 2016 car, which, you know, wasn't really the best looking car, but you know, at least Greenlight tried. I mean, I still miss those little rockets though, but last year, but for this year, they don't have it though. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, and I do like the simpler uh, livery in my opinion, but um, yeah, I think this is a car that is going to sell pretty good. Um, I think this car and the Menards car for this year are going to be really big sellers because they really stand out um, with, with the bright colors and the gold to, uh, finish to it as well. But um, yeah, really nice looking car and um, if you're a big Hinchcliffe fan like me, I would highly recommend getting it despite having a little arrow logo. But you know, at least Greenlight tried, but they really did a great job putting this on the correct arrow kits unlike last year's. So really really awesome for green lights glad they improved on the gold for this year
So overall, guys, we got ourselves a great, nice, wide variety of cars for this year. Uh, Greenlight did have their ups and downs for this year, but I'm really glad that most of these cars are accurate. Uh, they did a great job with the um, Honda Aero kits. I mean, I was excited for the Rossi 2016 winner, and after that, it got a lot more better with all these cars produced. But overall, guys, I really would highly recommend getting most of these cars. Uh, if you have not, if you guys have just started getting to the Verizon IndyCar series, this is a great year to start, especially with the new, with the right aero kits now. I don't want to call them new anymore, but they are new for diecast forms. So, but really nice right there. And feel free to tell me in the comments which one was your favorite or which one do you plan on getting or which one are you actually waiting forward to looking forward to. Uh, but also, I forgot to point out that this is the new package design that they have. So uh, I, lo I love the package design, and that was from last year's. So um, yeah, I, I definitely got to think that Greenlight did a really great job for the diecast and also the packaging as well. But um, you know, you guys can always tell me what you like about Greenlight Collectibles. They always have their ups and downs, but in the end, they sure did give us a good amount of variety in drivers. Um, I mean, 18, that's pretty impressive so far, um, and only two with just uh, repeats. So really nice right there, but um, there's always more to come. We got the uh, Fitzgerald 22 Montoya. We got Fernando Alonso's car. Um, we also got Takuma Sato's um, car that's going to be produced because he just won the 500. So, um, but also, yeah, big congrats to Takuma Sato. Um, that was a hell of a race to see. And uh, hopefully this video was also entertaining to see as well, as always, guys. But uh, feel free to give this video a good comment, like it. If you guys have not already, I highly encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel. If you guys want to check out any more IndyCar Diecast reviews, I have a playlist in the channel. Um, that could show you guys all my diecast reviews uh, and stay tuned for any more videos to come on any car related stuff or you know anything else guys but until then guys this is going to be a rich big ride i'm gonna have to sign off right now so um we'll see you guys on the next video but until then guys this is brian lafire jr saying sayonara farewell and um long live indycar diecast